Hey everybody, fun science video for you. One of the things we're gonna do first here is I'm gonna show you something. So I'm gonna come around here and I want you to do me a favor before we do anything else. I would like for you right now to draw a picture of these winds that you see on this, on this uh, little globe of the earth. So I want you to get the 90s in, the 60s, the 30s, the zeros, the 30s, the 60s, and I want you to put those in and I want you to label the wind. So I'm gonna have you freeze, all right, the camera and draw these. So pause it right now. Okay, I'm back. So what you need to do is you need to have a picture of those, okay? If you don't have a picture of those, why we're doing this, it's gonna kind of mess you up a little bit. And I don't want that to mess you up. So we're going to move this over for just a second here. And we're going to talk a little bit to you, all right, about a couple of things as we're getting going here. So first of all, I want you to understand something. Today we're going to talk about something really, really cool that's called the Coriolis effect, all right? The Coriolis effect is what this is called. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to do a couple demonstrations that prove the Coriolis effect. So first thing I need to do is we need to talk a little bit about the Earth. So the Earth has two types of ways that the Earth moves. I want you to try to write both of those down on your piece of paper if you're in my class. What are the two ways the Earth moves? They're both R words. Pause the video, see if you can write them down. Okay, I'm back. So if you pause the video, hopefully you wrote down the words revolution. The Earth is revolving it revolves around the sun and we also have the earth it rotates on its axis next thing i want you to do is this i want you to decide what does revolution cause and what does rotation cause pause the video and write your answer pause it go all right i'm back so let's see what you wrote hopefully you wrote that revolution around the sun causes years and that rotation on the earth's axis causes day and night so one of the things i want you to do right now is i also want you to try to figure out this which way does the earth rotate on its axis? Does it rotate clockwise or does it ro rotate counterclockwise? So what I want you to do is I want you to think about this. You probably know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So what you want to do is you want to take a ball of some kind and what you want to do, or you could take a balloon, you could take anything you have that's kind of roundish. And I want you to try to like draw like yourself, like an America on the ball or put tape an America on the ball. And then I want you to put somewhere like a fake sun, all right? Or just have a, have a, have a spot where you designate where the sun is and figure out, put the America, if this is your ball, put America on this side of the ball so that it's not in the sunlight, it's in darkness, and figure out which way you have to rotate the ball to make the sun rise on the East Coast. So try, pause the video and try to figure that out. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully you wrote that the Earth, if the sun rises in the East, the Earth has to be rotating to the counterclockwise direction. So hopefully that's what you wrote. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to see that this rotation of the axis or this revolution, all right, around the sun, one of them also impacts our global winds and our global ocean currents. So what I want you to do is this, which one of those two do you think impacts our global winds and our global ocean currents? Pause the video and write down your answer. All right, I'm back. So hopefully you picked that rotation on the axis is the one that impacts global winds. Now, what we're gonna do is I want you right now, if you're in my class, we're stopping this video for a second and we're gonna actually watch a video that's on YouTube. If you type, if you're not in my class, you can type in merry-go-round Coriolis and it's a great introduction. So I want you to do that. I want you to type in merry-go-round, merry-go-round, Coriolis effect and watch a video of the that helps intro Coriolis effect. Okay, I'm back again. And if you're back with me, you're now back. What we're gonna do is we're gonna resume. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to prove a couple of these wins. So what I want you to do is we're gonna focus right now on the Northern hemisphere. So we're gonna focus on the Northeast trade winds the westerlies and the easterlies. And one of the things I want you to notice is, and I want you to know is this, typically air will move toward the equator to heat up and it'll move away from the equator once it gets warm to cool down. And so what you notice is you have right here where the Northeast trade winds are, you have winds that are coming toward the equator. 
But once they got down here and warmed up, eventually we have winds up here in this middle section that are going away from the equator to cool down. Okay. Now, what's curious is that they're not moving straight south or straight north. They're moving and they're curving. Look, these are curving to the left. These are curving to the right. And one of the things you notice is that that's a little bit weird. Why aren't they just moving straight south or straight north? And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out why that is. We're going to try to figure out why that is. So here's the deal, okay? If, okay, if, bring this back over and hopefully it's going to be in your view. If the earth were not rotating on its axis, okay, if this wasn't actually occurring, then when the winds were going south, they wouldn't be doing that bend to the left. All right. And then when they were doing, when they're moving away from the equator in that middle area from the 30 to 60, they wouldn't be going to the right. Now we also have at the top there, we had, you saw the, remember you also have at the very top, the easterly. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to prove one of these with a little simple demonstration. So I've got some food coloring here. Okay. And what I'm going to do with the food coloring, okay, is I'm going to put a drop of this food coloring on this balloon as I am spinning the balloon counterclockwise. So this is counterclockwise, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get the balloon wound up really, really good. I'm gonna try to get it wound up so that it'll spin easier if I kind of get the string kind of like really wound up a lot clockwise direction, the string will be all twisted and it'll wanna go counterclockwise. So I'm gonna kind of get the string all twisted and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a drop of this food coloring on the balloon while I'm spinning it counterclockwise. When I do this, the drop is going to, the drop of food coloring is going to go down, but it's not going to go straight down. Okay, so if I just put a drop of this on here uh, without me spinning it, it would just go straight down. But what we're going to do is we're going to try to spin it and see which way it goes when I'm spinning it clockwise, excuse me, counter. Clockwise. So here we go. And that one didn't completely go down. So there we go. We're going to spin it a little faster. And now I'm going to let you see this. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to bring it around here. Hopefully, hopefully I'm going to bring it around here so you can see it. Okay. And what you notice is that if you look at that, that drop didn't go straight down. It went as it was going down, it went to the left. Okay, and that is pretty cool, all right? So if I didn't drop it, okay, if I didn't spin it, it would go straight down due to gravity, but it didn't do it that way, it did it the other way, which is kind of a cool thing, all right? So what I want you to do is I want you to look on your, your page there of the winds real quick. Did we just prove the, did we prove the easterlies, the westerlies, or the northeast trade winds? Which one did we prove? Go ahead and write down which one you think we proved, all right? And I'm gonna back my camera up a little bit to do another demonstration, okay? So hopefully you put that we just proved the Northeast trade winds, okay? We just proved the Northeast trade winds. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna do another demonstration and I'm gonna show you something here that hopefully will make sense. And then I'll do it live so you can actually see that it really actually exists and works. So I'm gonna bring this around where you can see it a little bit. What I've done on this balloon, okay, is I've drawn an equator, okay? And what I did is I put an arrow of which way counterclockwise is so that I actually spin the balloon in the right direction because I get confused when I'm doing this, all right? So that is the way I need to spin the balloon. So when I rotate this balloon, I'm gonna spin it counterclockwise. Now, what I normally do in this one in class, okay, is I have a student come up and what I do is I give the student a pen, okay? I give the student a pen and I say, I want you to just draw a vertical line. So I'll have them take out a pen and they'll draw a vertical line straight up on the balloon. And then what I'll do is I'll say, okay, next time when you do this, I'm gonna rotate the balloon, all right, when you do it. So you're gonna still try to draw it straight up, but I'm gonna rotate the balloon. Now, when they do that, what happens is this, okay? And you can see here that this is going to the right, okay? This is going to the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually do this live so that you can realize that I'm not like 
drawing this and doing it wrong. So I'm gonna put this on here. And what I'm gonna do is as I start to draw a vertical line straight up, I can actually see through the, the balloon. Now look, if I don't spin the balloon, I can draw a vertical line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over here a little bit and I'm gonna do that again, but this time I'm gonna spin the balloon counterclockwise as I do it. And you can see that it's, as I spin the balloon, that's going up and to the right. So it's going again up and to the right. I'm gonna bring this back around here so you can kind of draw yourself a picture of that. That's what it's actually doing. And so I want you to look at your picture again and I want you to see which one did we just prove? Well, we actually just proved now the westerlies is what we just proved. And so one of the things that's really, really cool, okay, is that you live, if you are in my class, you live at about 40 north. And that's where you live approximately. So if you don't live in Kettering, Ohio, figure out what latitude you live at. But this is why when we look at our weather, we always have weather, you might remember, if you think about the United States, we always have this weather that starts in the Gulf and it kind of comes up and goes right. That's why our primary weather pattern in the US is that our winds are going west to east. Well, this is because of the spin of the Earth, okay? The Earth spinning counterclockwise on its axis is what's actually causing us to have the predominant airflow we have in the United States of America. Now, what's amazing is that this spinning of the Earth axis, okay, this spinning of the Earth's axis is actually also impacting, all right, our oceans, okay? And so that's a pretty darn cool thing. So because of that spin on the axis, we have the Coriolis effect. Ladies and gentlemen, Science is awesome and science is fun. I hope that these demonstrations helped you to understand how the rotation of the earth on its axis helps us to actually have some strange things occurring with our winds and our ocean currents. And this is why the rotation of the earth impacts, all right, impacts our global winds and our global ocean currents. Have a great day, everybody, and I hope that uh, that helped you understand the Coriolis effect a little better. See ya.